All right. Well, this is what I felt in my spirit Friday night late. And then we're going to begin right where Brother Tyler opened. No surprise, it's Pentecost. We might as well talk about it. Acts chapter 2, in your reading, verses 1 through 4, if you have your Bibles. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to take a drink while you turn there. I want you to listen carefully to some of the verbiage here. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with, everybody say, one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Everybody say, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. You can receive the Holy Ghost sitting down. Ain't that awesome? You can receive it in your car. You can receive it on the edge of your bed. You can receive it driving down the highway. You might have to pull over. But you can receive the Holy Ghost just anywhere you open up your spirit and begin to praise Him. Repent and praise Him, and He will come right where you are. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So today I just want to minister, teach, preach, whatever the Holy Ghost wants on this subject. The sound of Pentecost. The sound of Pentecost. Let's pray one more time. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your healings. We thank you for the miracles you've conducted, oh God. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the gift of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. We thank you for your blood, your mercy, oh God, that's fresh and new each morning. We worship you today. We glorify you today in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's, let's take a moment. Let's just repent right now so we can prepare our hearts for the word. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, the Bible says if you will confess with your mouth your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you. You don't have to yell it, but you need to vocalize it out of your mouth. Let's repent together. Father, forgive us, O oh God. Forgive me for my lying, my cheating. Forgive me, Lord, for stealing. Forgive me, Lord, for whatever your sin is, just speak it right now. Father, forgive me for this. Forgive me for failing you. Forgive me for struggling with... Lord, forgive me for porn. Forgive me for murder. Forgive me, oh God, for su entertaining suicidal thoughts. Forgive me, Jesus, uh, for not getting to your house when I was well able to. Uh, forgive me, Jesus, oh God. Forgive me for losing my temper on my brother, my mother, my sister. Come on, just whatever it is that you know is against His Word and against His Spirit. Jesus, uh, Come on, forgive me of all of my sins. Uh, there's too many to even name, Father. I pray you'd forgive me. Uh, I thank you for your blood, and I thank you for your mercy, and I pray you'd wash my spirit. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me of every sin. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Now, in Hebrews chapter 8, Verses 1 through 6, the Apostle Paul is teaching. And he said, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Here we go, verse 5. Who serve unto the example, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Everybody say, the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished 
of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern. Everybody say pattern. Showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, speaking of Jesus, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Everybody say there is a pattern from heaven. Amen. Let's go to Exodus and let's look at this pattern for a moment. Exodus 28, verses 33 through 36. Y'all know I'm a word man, so we got to dig. And beneath upon, now he's speaking here and describing to them how to build the garment, how to make the garment of the priest in the tabernacle while he's doing the tabernacle services, while he's ministering in their tabernacle. This is a specific portion of how he is making that garment. And he says, beneath upon the hem, the bottom part of the garment toward the ground, bells of gold between them round about, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a pattern here. Upon the hem of the robe round about, and it shall be upon Aaron to minister. And listen, his sound, everybody say sound, shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord. And when he cometh out, that he die not. We don't want, we, we don't want the priest dying. We, we don't need the priest dying. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold engrave upon it like the engravings of a signet holiness to the Lord. Now Jewish tradition teaches that there was a rope tied to the priest's leg. And as he went in to the holiest of holiest, lest the priest be unclean and the Lord strike him dead. And so he would, that's what he's talking about, that he die not. We don't want the Lord striking the priest dead, so the priest got to make sure he's clean. Not only is he sacrificing for the people, but he's got to sacrifice for himself. He has to make sure he's clean. If he's not, and he gets in there uh, uh, in that presence of the pure holiness of God, the Lord would strike him dead. So they tied that, that rope around his, his, uh, his ankle in case... <laughs> He didn't do what he was supposed to do, and he went in there unclean so the Levites could pull him out. Isn't that scary? There's a proper fear of God, and they had it, and this country lost it. American Christianity lost the fear of God. We think he ought to answer to us instead of us answering to him. But they had this fear of God. They tied that rope just in case. He might appear good. He might be right. That's why the scripture says there's a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And he might have looked holy and looked right, but he might have gotten there and the Holy Ghost said, "Uh uh-uh, you don't reach my checklist. You're not sanctified. You're not justified. Boom. Might shake some congregations if he did a little bit of that now. Might stir up some people to repent. And so they'd pull him out. But listen to what the CJB says, and that's the complete Jewish Bible version. It says, it's sound. And so when he went in, it's sound. Referring to the bells making noise as the priest ministered by this, they knew he was alive and well because he's moving and he's shaking the, the, the blood on the mercy seat and he's moving and bouncing and worshiping. And he's in the presence of God. You saw what we just did. In the presence of God, we danced, we ran, we moved. There's an electricity in the Holy Ghost. You can't help but move when he's moving. And if you want to get in the groove with him, you got to move. And so he's in there moving. So them bells are clanging. Bing, bing, whatever noise they was making. I can't make bell noises by myself. Somebody help me. (laughs) Where's my drummer at? Ting, ting. And so so there's, there's movement. But should it suddenly cut off? There's no sound coming from the holy place. What's going on with the priest? Oh, priest, <laughs> you still breathing in there? And if there was no, no noise and no sound, they would pull him back out and they'd have to do some repenting and some sanctification and try to go back in and somebody else had to be bold and brave enough to go back in there and do his job. But the KJV says, his sound. Not its sound, 
but his sound. His sound shall be heard, his voice calling aloud, worshiping in the holy place. And so the pattern is where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be a sound. Come on. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be clapping. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there will be dancing. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, somebody's going to have to shout, Yes! Where the Spirit of the Lord is, somebody's going to lift their voice up and say, Hallelujah! Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And when He sets you free, you don't remain quiet you say thank you Jesus thank you for setting me free thank you for breaking my chains thank you for letting me come out of that there's a sound of liberty thank you Jesus there will be a sound of Pentecost 2nd Chronicles verse 5 and 11 through 14 and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them Asaph of Hermon of, how about Jeduthum, that worked for you? With their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having symbols and psalteries and harps stood at the end of the altar. And with them, look at this, look at this, come on Jesus. And with them, and a hundred and how many? Twenty. A hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpets. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singles were as one. Everybody say one. To make one sound. Say one sound. To be heard in the praising and thanksgiving or thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not even stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God God does not do anything by accident he said from heaven I'll set an example in the tabernacle pointing toward Pentecost what I have in heaven I want in the earth I want my creation to praise me with a sound I want my creation to clap their hands I want my creation to shout with the voice of triumph Come on, look at him. Just as there was 120 priests in the tabernacle, there were 120 disciples in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. And if she had to have the Holy Ghost, who do you think you are? She gave birth to the one with the Holy Ghost. Come on. And just as there was one sound... In the outer court of the tabernacle, there was one mind and one accord in the upper room. And just as the glory cloud filled the house of God, the tabernacle, it filled all the house of the upper room where the disciples were sitting on the day of Pentecost. There is a sound of Pentecost. There is a sound of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain and I want to get myself under the rain under the sound under him there is a sound of Pentecost Psalm 89 Psalm 89 15 through 18 blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk O Lord in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. And in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength. And in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Verse 18. For the Lord 
is our defense and the Holy One of Israel is our King. Do everything you think you're big enough to do, Satan. But one thing you ought to know and do know, and I remind you, and I remind my feelings, my God is King. Jesus is King. And Jesus is my advocate. And Jesus is my sound. He's my buckler. He's my shield. He's my warrior of righteousness. He's the one that goes before me and follows behind me. He protects me on my left and on my right. There's nobody like Jesus. There's no weapon like the Word of God. There's no help like the Holy Ghost. And there is a sound of Pentecost. The complete Jewish Bible says it like this. How happy are the people who know the joyful shout. They walk in the light of your presence, Adonai. There is a sound of Pentecost. When we come out of our bondage, if we've ever been a prisoner, don't tell me they don't come out into the open and kind of go, whoo, it's nice to be out here. No bars around me. It's nice to be, it's nice to be out here breathing this free air instead of all this block wall and all this room and this containment. I'm free. When I'm set free, I'm free. The Bible says he that the Son make free is free indeed. He'll set you free. He'll deliver you. You don't have to go back. You don't have to go back to that. He's made you free. Thank you, Jesus. And listen, there's a sound of Pentecost where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. I love that song. There's liberty. There's freedom. And you're not going to keep me quiet when he sets me free. You're not going to make me shut up when he sets me free. I'm sorry you're going through it, but just get out my way for a moment. He's been good to me. Don't let nobody box you in when it comes praise time. Knock them down if you got to. Say, excuse me. You can sit here like a lump on a log if you want to. But I'm going to show you what it looks like when somebody is set free. When somebody realizes they're free. John chapter 3. One of my favorite portions of Scripture. They're all my favorites, but this is on the top list. John 3, 1 through 8. There was a man of the Pharisees. His name was Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. You're close. (laughs) For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. His name shall be called Emmanuel, for God is with us. Little insert. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see, perceive, or understand the kingdom of God. And look at Nicodemus. He proved it right away. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Man, that's gross. What's wrong with you, Nicodemus? Where's your head at? That's gross. Come on, that's gross. It's good to laugh right there. Man, that man's out of his mind. Woo. This this teacher of teachers, and you don't know what I speak of. That's why Jesus likes, son, I'm about to teach you some new stuff. Can he enter the second time as Moses will be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit 
is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. There ain't no, there ain't no if, ands, or buts. There ain't this scripture says this and this scripture says that. There's plenty that agree. You must be born again. Verse 8 is the most interesting one to me. It says, the wind bloweth. Now, we're talking about being born again of the water and the spirit. Being born again, born of the water, born of the spirit. And suddenly, he starts talking about the wind. Water, spirit, wind. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Everyone that's born of the Spirit will experience it like this. These elements are going to be there for everyone who says, I was born of the Spirit. John 3 and 8, in the literal translation, this is nice, in the literal translation says it this way, the Spirit breathes where, it, where He desires. The Spirit breathes where He desires. Capital S, Spirit. And you hear His voice. But you do not know from where He comes and where He goes. So is everyone having been generated from the Spirit. In other words, reborn by the Spirit. Created by the Spirit. Isaiah 28 and 9 said it like this. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. There a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people there is a sound to being born again there is a sound of Pentecost there will be a sound you can't leave him saying I don't know whether or not I'm saved I don't know whether or not I did what I was supposed to do there's a sound that's going to tell you and tell everybody around you that I was born again there's a sound of Pentecost Let's look at eight for a moment. The wind is the word pneuma. And it does interpret spirit. Bloweth where it listeth, and that does interpret desired. Thou hearest the sound, and it is the Greek word phone that looks like it, P-H-O-N-E, phone. And it interprets language. It interprets language thereof. But cannot tell whence it cometh, whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So being interpreted, the Spirit moves like a breeze where it is wanted, and you will hear its language, but you don't understand its origin, nor do you understand its destination. In other words, it's unknown to you. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. So everyone that's born of the Spirit is going to hear a language that they have never learned or understood, yet the, uh, yet the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, will enable them to speak it. I didn't need a teacher. I didn't need a textbook. All I needed was a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he caused me to speak in a language that no one ever taught me. Don't know nothing about it. Feels good speaking it. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, we're picking back up where we started. So we left off in verse 4 where the Holy Ghost fell on them. Where they were sitting. And they began to speak in tongues. Look at verse 5 through 11 now. This is interesting. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men. Now this is the first day of Pentecost. This is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. There were dwelling at Jerusalem. They're all speaking in tongues up there in that upper room. There were dwelling at Jerusalem. Meaning they were hanging out at Jerusalem. Devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, understand this was a time when the Jews came from other nations. When they came out of wherever they were 
And they journeyed back to Jerusalem. They were from all kind of different nations, all kind of different languages. And they come to Jerusalem. Now it'll make a little more sense. They're all gathered there when this happens. And they're in the upper room. And they must have, they didn't have a speaker system there. They must have come busting out the doors of the upper room. Speaking in tongues, getting loud. Because it felt good. Wasn't worried about embarrassing somebody sitting next to them. I'm going to get going with this. This is powerful. What's coming out my mouth? Look out. They were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled, saying, One to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galileans? Meaning they have their own dialect. They have their own language. And how hear we every man in our tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia. They're going to get mad at me for saying their, their country wrong. Pamphylia in Egypt, every part of Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of of God. Haven't you ever wondered when you break into the Spirit and you're making that sound of Pentecost and you're speaking in tongues, you're wondering, I don't know what I'm saying, I just know it feels good. I don't know what I'm declaring but this felt like a war tongue and I, I don't know exactly what's happening but this tongue felt like peace and I don't know exactly what I'm saying but I can feel the Holy Ghost telling me, pushing me to let it come out of my mouth and when it's all said and done, you might be speaking German German. You might be speaking Asian. You might be speaking one of these 18 languages on the day of Pentecost. 120 there, filled with the Spirit, speaking 18 different languages. So much that the people outside could hear and knew. What were they declaring? The wonderful works of of God. I don't know what I'm doing but when I pray in the Holy Ghost I hope to God I'm declaring to the enemy and every tongue like it. There are wonderful works of God. He is still a healer. He is still a deliverer. He is still a, come on. He still does exactly what he said he would do. He's a miracle working God and I'm here to speak in tongues and prophesy in the spirit. My God is wonderful. He is mighty. There is a sound of Pentecost. Paul even teaches us in the book of Corinthians that not only will the Spirit lead us to speak in the tongues of men, but also of angels. I don't know if any man's going to interpret that for you. And being born of the Spirit will open the gift of diverse kinds of tongues or different kinds of languages so how is it possible that this could happen because it is the sound of pentecost it is the sound of pentecost the tabernacle was a pattern of things from above and a foreshadowing of things to come and the complete Jewish Bible for John 3 and 3 says, Ye must be born again from above. From above. We've all been born from beneath. But when you're born again, you're born from above. When we're born in this world, we're born in sin and shape and in iniquity. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mom. Whatever those sins are, generation to generation, we're born already dealing with sin in our life before we can even speak or walk or crawl. But thanks be to God. He said, if you would just be born from above, I I'll begin to change everything. The limitation sin is set upon you. I lift it. I will lift it. I will lift it. I will lift it. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 through 48. There is a centurion by the name of Cornelius. He's praying. He's a Gentile. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost fell on the Jews. Acts chapter 8, the Holy Ghost fell on the Samaritans. 
In Acts chapter 10, it falls on the Gentiles. Everybody say, I'm a Gentile. Now, you might have some Jew blood in you way back somewhere if you happen to do a DNA test. Who knows? But if anything else, you're a mixed, <laughs> you're either a Samaritan today because you got mixed blood or you just a flat Gentile, got no Jew in you. That's what Gentile means, not a Jew. See, and, and, and their thinking and the way God preached to them is, there's you, and I don't care about nobody else. But then he began to say, there's a people I'm going to reach to if you keep stiff-necking me. There's another fold. There's another flock. And we are that other flock, the Gentiles. So this is the first Gentile. And he is having dreams. And the Bible says he gave much alms. He prayed always. He would stand on that outer court and worship because as a Gentile, he couldn't go any further. But he desired the things that the Jews had. He desired their God. And so he prayed and he gave alms. And, and the Lord gave him a dream, sent an angel to him. And the angel says, if you'll call on Peter, he'll tell you what you need to do. And the Lord had to convince Peter to go to the Gentile dogs. And he did. And he went. And Peter's preaching. And you can read the rest of 10 till you get to verse 38. And here's where it turns interesting. How God anointed. Peter's preaching. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Verse 43, to give him to get to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision, meaning the Jews, which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. How do you know that the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured out on them? Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. There was a sound that could only be resonated from Pentecost. And now Pentecost had come to the Gentiles and the Gentiles received their Pentecost. And they made the same sound the Jews did. And that's how they knew that they had received the same gift. And then Peter said, verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized for which we have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? They received it just like we did. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they prayed them to tarry certain. There is a sound of Pentecost. And when you experience your Pentecost, there will be a sound. There will be a language. You will speak in other tongues unknown tongues as the Spirit gives you the ability to speak. You are surrounded today. If you haven't experienced that, you are surrounded today by people who have experienced that. I've seen the states experience it. I've seen Madagascar experience it. I've seen London and Nigeria experience it. I've seen it in Africa. And wherever you go, when the Holy Ghost is poured out, the sound of Pentecost rises up. The language of Pentecost rises up because this is the birth of the church and when a baby's born it's going to cry out here I am now that we know the sound of Pentecost what is Pentecost and you can stand with me I'm going to wrap this bring this bird down 
Pentecost is the 50th day from Passover. 50th day from Passover. And the day of Pentecost fell on the Jewish celebration of the Feast of Weeks. And that commemorated the giving of the law on stone tablets from Moses on Mount Sinai to the people. It was literally the birth of the Jewish church. Ain't God cool? On the same day, the same celebration of the birth of the Jewish church, he birthed the Christian church. Jeremiah 31 and 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And 2 Corinthians 3 and 3 says, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. The Holy Ghost is the new covenant wherewith He puts His law on your heart, not tables of stone. Thank you, Jesus. He makes it personal. He comes in there and touches you. When you have the Holy Ghost... You don't need to tell somebody to tell you you've done something wrong. That finger starts writing on your heart. That Holy Ghost finger starts writing on your heart, son. You know better than that. Daughter, you're better than that. Thank you, Jesus. Pentecost was the birth of the Christian church. The sound of Pentecost is the sound of new birth and if we want to go to heaven we must be born again from above we need a personal Pentecost I've got to have a personal Pentecost my personal Pentecost came when I was 14 years old someone tried to tell me that I had it when I was 11 and I had not spoken in other tongues and for three years I jostled in my spirit whether I had the Holy Ghost or not. Wrestled, but kept stumbling in the same places. The problem with our world is they want to tell you you don't need that. Yeah, you don't need that if you want to stay in your sin. You don't need that if you want to go to hell. You don't need that if you want to serve yourself and serve Satan. But if you want to be delivered, if you want to be set free, if you want to step into the kingdom for such a time as this, this is the day of your salvation. This is the hour of Pentecost. This is a time frame that we're living in where we need the Spirit of God to change us so we can change our world. Come on, let's pray right now. We worship you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Come on. Lift your voices unto the King of glory. Come on. Let's make a sound of Pentecost today. Let's let the sound of Pentecost go up. Come on. Let's pray in other tongues as the Spirit of God give us utterance. Come on. Pray in your heavenly language. Pray in the language of the Spirit. Come on. Let your sound go up. Hallelujah. Go up with a joy shout we worship you Jesus we worship you Jesus there's victory there's victory there was victory on the day of Pentecost there's victory in your Pentecost there was victory because the blood set you free there was victory because the spirit brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light there was victory on your Pentecost hallelujah hallelujah I bless you I praise you I exalt you. I adore you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Hey, 
In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray you pour out your spirit on every hungry vessel today. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. You can't pray without opening your mouth. You can't pray. He's not going to draw near to you if you keep your mouth closed. But open up your mouth and lift it toward heaven and begin to proclaim, I love you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Ghost from my head to my toe. Fill me again with the Holy Ghost. Renew my spirit. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Jesus, for the birthday of the church. Thank you, Jesus, for our eighth anniversary. Hallelujah. I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. You are worthy and wonderful to be praised. Oh, wonderful Jesus. The sound of Pentecost. The sound of Pentecost. Hallelujah. 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 Are there any ladies that you'd like to pray because you haven't prayed through in a while? You haven't spoken in tongues in a little bit. If you need prayer, would you come? I want you to come. If you're a lady or a man and you've never spoken in tongues or it's been a while. Come on, we're going to pray. It's Pentecost. If it can happen anytime, it can happen today. It's Pentecost. If it's been a little bit. Hallelujah. Come on, you're not online. They can't see you. You don't have to be embarrassed. Come on, it's been a moment. Some of you ladies come and surround sis. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There was 120 there. They were sitting together in one mind and one accord. We're going to agree with our sister. We're going to agree with our sister that she break forth in the new tongue. She break forth in the new language. That God heal her head to toe right now. She's really up here for healing. She's really up here for healing. She knows that the Holy Ghost flows like it can. She'll be healed before she leaves. Come on, in the name of Jesus, lay your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I command that back to let go. I command that 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 I command those spasms to cease in the name of Jesus. Release her pain. Pain, release her in the name of Jesus. Father, fill her full of your spirit. Let her speak in tongues as your spirit gives the utterance in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus, there's healing in his hands. There's healing in your body. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the Jesus, we thank you, Jesus, we thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Come on, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's it. Come on. Come on, let it go, sis. Let it go. There's more than stammering tongues. There's more than stammering lips. Come on, let the tongues go. You have the Holy Ghost. Let him refill you. Let him refill you. Uh, by faith, begin to speak the tongues of angels, the tongues of men, the tongues of the sound of Pentecost. Oh
that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I rebuke every doubt and every fear. I rebuke rejection. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free from rejection. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Be free. Stay in that vein, stay in that vein. Come on, fire of the Holy Ghost, joy of the Holy Ghost, love of the Holy Ghost. Destiny changing. When you draw 